everybody, JJ here, back with another Wednesday of Zoom Networking. Today's guest speaker is just an unbelievably nice guy. Had the pleasure to speak at great length last couple of days and really get to know one another. He's out of the Pace Morby Sub 2 community. And again, if you've been on the calls, you've heard me talk about Pace Morby many times. He is the premier expert in creative finance, creative real estate in the world. Um, he just is. Pace the Sub 2 community is the premier real estate education program in the country, bar none. Don't care who you are. Um, unfortunately, we don't have Pace Morby today, but we do have one of his rock stars. Uh, young man is a father, husband, family man, businessman, entrepreneur, real estate investor. Um, had come from you know humble beginnings to be just a, a success in every regard. I'd like to introduce my good friend, Mr. Keto Ketla. Keto, how, how are you today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on, JJ. Really appreciate it. Oh, man, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, for those who don't know you, where, where in the country are you located? I'm actually in Billings, Montana, out of all places. I actually grew up here, but I was actually born in Laos in Southeast Asia. And uh, my family got sponsored, and we ended up in Billings, Montana. And my parents have been here ever since, but I recently just moved back. Um, after high school, I left, and then I uh, was living in Seattle for a while, and then I just moved back to Billings about two years ago. So you were born in Laos, and you came here at an early age. Yes. I, I was about six years old uh, when my family actually fled the country. Um, you know, fled the country, and then we ended up in a refugee camp and got sponsored to wow. Billings, Montana. So you basically, your family had to kind of start all over in, in many regards. Yes. So you were raised through your early years, uh, elementary school, high school. Yep, elementary. Oh, yeah. Yep, elementary, high school, and after high school, went off to college, got my degree in electrical engineering, and, um, you know, did that for a while before I got into real estate. Okay, so through your 20s, you were in college and studying mm -hmm. engineering? Yes, uh, electrical engineering. Electrical engineering. So um, as, as we move forward, obviously, we've met through Sub2, Pace's community. Uh, mm -hmm. At what point did you fall into real estate? You know, it was actually, um, I was an engineer for Hewlett Packard. And um, I read this book, and I think most people have read it, you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. So that was kind of like the catalyst that kind of got me thinking. Because at the time, I was... Um, I was single and I was staying at my, uh, living with my sister. So when I moved up to Seattle, I stayed with my sister for, for a few months and I know I needed a, a, to be out on my own. So I thought, well, you know what, instead of um, renting for an extra couple hundred dollars, why don't I get my own place? And so this is before I even thought about investing in real estate. It was just more logical. Like, you know what, extra couple hundred dollars, I could have my own place. And so that was, um, that was how I got into buying my first property at the age of 24. Wow, 24. That's, that's, that's a good, so you bought your first property at 24 years of age? Yes. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, so as you move forward, so you were kind of doing real estate part-time while you're an engineer? Yeah, I was, um, I, you know, I was doing kind of real estate part-time. So I bought my first house. So it was a uh, bank-owned property. And what's fun is like when I bought it, like the agent I was working with didn't tell me about doing an inspection or anything like that. I was just like, I thought I wanted a house that was cheap. So she goes, well, I have a bank owned property, you know, I can show it to you. So she showed it to me. I said, you know what? I'll, I'll buy it. Right. And it wasn't until after closing when I got the keys and they turned on the utilities because this was in like February. Right. And the walls was like leaking. And I realized I had busted pipes, right? And, um, you know, and I, I didn't really have a great experience because my agent didn't really show me the ropes. They just wanted to sell me a house. And that was it. Even though I knew it needed a lot of work because I could visually see the holes in the walls, poor carpet, whatever, those things I didn't, but I didn't know anything about, oh, maybe you should get the electrical or the plumbing or the heating inspected. Uh, I didn't know any of that when I bought my it, first house. It was kind of jump right in. Yeah, I was jumping right in. Here's a cheap house. You wanted something cheap. Here you go. And uh, that was my my first property. 
Well, no, you and I have met through Sub2, again, Pace's community. How long were you doing real estate part-time before you, you came into Sub2? And how did you find Sub2? You know, it was interesting because, um, you know, when I was an engineer, I, I bought like three, four properties before I even got my real estate uh, um, real estate license. So I got my real estate license not to sell real estate, but just to for my own purposes. And then I started getting into sales, which led me to quitting real estate. I mean, engineering, I jump into real estate salesperson. So I did that for almost, I think like 17 years, uh, 19 years or so. Um, it was just three years ago where I actually, um, you know, got introduced to the, the subject to community. And you did, now you did a number of trans transactions before you came into subject, is that correct? Uh, yes, yes, for sure. Like, I think like most people, you know, um, you know, can remember back in, uh, mm -hmm. you know, 2008, right? Uh, when the real estate took a, a turn, I mean, even though I, so I quit my job as an engineer in 2003. So it was like, you know, between 2003, 2008, I was doing well in real estate, selling properties and I was buying properties. And, you know, this was before you really had like, you know, communities like this and like paces, mm -hmm. right? Where you can learn from other people, really kind of learn like kind of on my own, right? So I bought all these properties thinking that, you know, oh, the value is going to go up. Well, as you know, 2008, the market took a dive. I really, JJ, was like, was a wake up call because I literally, um, I built a portfolio and I've literally lost everything. Um, I lost um, over $2 million in real estate, all the IRS, 300,000 in back taxes. So I literally was out for the count, JJ. And I remember, uh -huh. you know, I have, uh, you know, three kids, right? And, um, you know, during that time, I was so broke. I mean, from making a lot of money as a realtor, you know, to making nothing, right? And I remember it was my daughter's birthday, right? And um, I was so broke. I literally had to sneak into her house, I mean, her, her room, right? Go to a, her own piggy bank so I can grab money from the piggy bank to go to the dollar store to buy her a birthday present, JJ. Wow. It was like, you know, um, as a father, as a husband, you know, we identify ourselves, at least for me, like being that provider, you know, yeah. being someone that could plan for the family. And at that time, I, I felt like I, I couldn't do anything right, you know? And I mean, there was times where, you know, they got water shut off bill, my car repossessed. So I went from making money to literally just being worse than broke because now I was in the negative, right? And then I wasn't... Uh, wasn't able to buy the family. That was that, that was tough for me, you know. But, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Um, so from there, how, how long from there till I mean things got better to some point? And you you jumped into sub two. Uh, yeah. So I mean, it was actually. I mean, I, I definitely quit. Like I stopped doing real estate for almost a decade, right? So like late two thousand seventeen, I did my my first wholesale deal. And I think that was kind of the callus because I always knew in the back of my mind that real estate was a, a great vehicle to build wealth, right? But at that time, I didn't have the right information, didn't have the right guidance to, to really grow. So I've kind of learned on my own. And um, when I did my first wholesale deal, bought a property, and this is before I really knew about wholesaling, I thought, you know what? I just knew enough about real estate because I've been in it for a while. But you know what? I think I could pull this off. So I went and bought a house, told the seller that I'll buy it. Give me 90 days to so I'll pay cash. I didn't even have any money, right? It's like, you know, give me 90 days. But what I did know was that the house I was buying was 50% of the ARV, right? Was was less. Mm. So I figured, you know, let me buy myself some time. So I, I got it under contract. And I figured, well, I got 90 days to figure this out. So I call up, uh, I put an ad on Craigslist. Hey, house for sale, took a picture of it, posted on there, had people show it. And long story short, I went from my first wholesale deal, made like $60,000, right? Wow. And, and that to me was life-changing because I didn't even realize it was really possible. It's like, man, is it good? I was like, when I got my contract, I was lying awake at night. I felt like I won the lottery. It's like, is this really real? Is this gonna happen? 
And so two weeks after it closed, when I got the check in my hand, that was one thing that changed my life. Because people said, you know, you're only one deal away from changing your life, right? And that was that one deal because that one deal led me to, you know, doing more wholesale deals, doing more wholesale deals to, uh, you know, I'll fast forward to where I met Pace, right? Because I wanted to learn about creative deals. And somebody mentioned Pace Morby. Looked, so I looked at Pace Morby and it's like, oh, wow, this has some good content. And then when I signed up, I literally had like no, I didn't have any rentals because I was just doing, you know, wholesaling. And I remember pacing, you know, well, wholesaling is great, but eventually you're going to want to create, you know, cash flow. You're going to find a way to, you know, to hold these properties. And so when I utilized some of his techniques, right, you know, going from not having any rentals in less than a year and a half to having, you know, 80 rentals and creating a financial freedom for myself and my family. That's fantastic. So now in the time that you've been in sub two, um, are you with one of the accountability groups? Uh, yes, I'm actually the uh, Pacific uh, Northwest um, the accountability leaders. We host a meeting every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific where, you know, we get together, we share, you know, share wins and support each other. Because what I realize is that real estate, it's, um, it's a long game, right? It's not a get rich quick. Some may seem it that way, but real estate is actually like get rich for sure. Right. If you stick to the game plan, be patient and look at it from a long perspective. Right. Look at it five years, 10 years down the road. Right. If you get just one property and you just kind of stack it up and you get to the point where that property, you know, those income you're making for your property can replace your active income, then you have a choice. Right. You want to keep it working or you want to, you know, jump into real estate full time. So now, obviously, your, your topic today is, is, how you went to within two years going from zero to 80, 80 units. So, you know, most people would think that's, that's like impossible, but you know, you've actually done that, correct? Oh yes. Yeah. And, um, and then that's the power just thinking outside the box and being creative. Right. Because, you know, back in the wholesaling days where everything's got to have a big margin, you know, in order to, to make money. But here, when you're, looking at it from a cash flow perspective. And it's like, you got to set yourself a, a goal. It's like, you know what? I want an X amount of passive income per month, right? That's, that's your goal. Then you work backwards. Like, you know, how many properties do I need to, you know, to have that can cash flow an X amount per month to accumulate enough to, to hit your goals? And so when my wife and I, before we moved to Billings, we really had a goal. It's like, what? What does that look like? And then for us, you know, our, our magic number was 10000 a month, right? For us, you know what? If, if our family can make $10,000 a month, right, that pays our mortgage, car payment, give us, you know, a couple of vacations a year, that was, that, that was my goal moving in. And we basically gave ourselves like, you know what? Let's do this in three years. If we can do this in three years, which is $3,300 of passive income for a year, I think we should be able to, you know, to hit that goal. So that was kind of our mindset going in. But I didn't realize that when I activated the power of creative financing, that how quickly we're able to hit that. Because when we set that goal in mind, I didn't realize we hit it till after our seven month, right? Accumulate properties. I was looking through our, our numbers and I, I remember like sitting down talking to my wife. I was like, honey, did you realize that we, we just hit, um, you know, we just hit our, our goal? Right, because sometimes you're in the trenches, you're working, working, you're cleaning properties, you don't really realize it, right? So you start to sit back and say, okay, you know, where are we, right? And and so where we hit our goal uh, a lot quicker than I had anticipated. In your journey, so have these all been single family homes? You know, it was a combination: single family homes, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes. Um, our our biggest unit is an eighteen unit apartment complex. So now, how hard was it going from single family to multifamily? You know, um, it wasn't that, that much of a of a transition, right? Because I'm already, you know, doing, you know, uh, duplexes and triplex and fourplexes, right? So it's just another building, right? That just happens to have like 18 units. So, um, but it was, the thing was, was just, you know, really getting on the numbers and just really knowing what your numbers are 
what you can get for rents and what you could rent the properties for. Um, so for me, I, I, you know, I have, I have two property managers that manages all our rentals. They take care of the um, collecting the rents, any maintenance issues. I my wife, she won't let me lift the hammer. Right. So uh, she goes, you know, if, if, if you're going to start doing plumbing and stuff, then don't buy these properties. Figure out a way to, you know, uh, leverage yourself. Uh, well, that makes perfect sense. You don't need to be the technician. Um, I know myself, I've got a lot of things going on, a lot of irons in the fire. Uh, recently, having brought on um, my goddaughter, actually, to work as my VA handling all my Facebook stuff. So that, that frees me up for a lot of other things. Um, so I, I know that's invaluable. As you've moved along, uh, what were some of the most challenging hurdles you had to overcome to uh, get, get the ball rolling and be consistent with, uh, with your business? You know, I, I think one, it was just really just having that mindset, right? Because, you know, for, for things to change, you really have to start with the mindset that things are possible. And sometimes we feel like we have to know everything in order to take action, right? And what I've learned from, from Pace is like, hey, you know what? Just take action and you'll figure it out because, you know, with a community, like you could reach out to people, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? You know, and, I, and that's what I started doing was I think I wouldn't have been able to scale if it wasn't for really leaning on the community, right? Leaning on the people that's gone before me that are doing things that I wanted to do and also like partnering up with other people, right? And so just really changing my, my mindset that, you know, it's, it's possible that I don't have to know it all, right? I just need to know enough just to take action and just take consistent action. Because for us, like people ask, well, how are you finding these deals? Because I was buying them in the height of the market when people were overbidding for properties left and right. And I was still getting stuff at 50, 60 cents on a dollar because what I was doing is basic, um, I was just sending out letters, handwritten letters, right? And just to follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up. And, you know, I was able to get deals that are literally like 50, 60 cents on the dollar. So as you were, you know, sending out these letters and you were, you were finding opportunities, uh, there was a point in time when you obviously, you know, growing your business, you scaled up and you started bringing on people to assist you and work in certain areas. Were you using a VA at any point in time? You know, in the beginning, um, I actually I had a team of VAs just, you know, co-calling. And then I had a, um, you know, acquisition manager just following up and things like that. And so that was how I was able to get some of these leads uh, to come in, was having a VA. I had a partner who was more of an integrator, right? He was the one that set up the back end system for me, right? You know, doing the calls, and we would have uh, we had at one time like total four VAs doing calls. And one thing what I found was like I mean, Billings, Montana, right? Population about one hundred and thirty thousand at the most. So we got through the data fairly quickly because because you could only you know call them so many times, and you have people calling you know for eight hours a day. You know, you you start to kind of run out of, of data because I don't invest anywhere else. I just invest in Billings, Montana. This is like- Really? That's your only market? Yep, it's my only market. Wow. So you haven't moved out, you haven't done anything, you know, what I will call virtual prospecting. You haven't selected other states yet. No, no, I, I, I've i not. Just mainly uh, Billings, Montana. And this is all, all I focus on. And so originally you were wholesaling, but now you're building your buy and hold portfolio? Correct, yes. You get 10 different people, you've got 10 different personalities. You know, we're not all the same kind of thing. Some people are a little bit more extroverted and introverted. Um, you know, you seem to be really, really smooth and fluid. You know, were you this way in the beginning? Did you find that you had to develop some parts of your personality? Were you always kind of naturally outgoing? Was this a part of a transition or is this one of the benefits of you're already kind of you know, conversational and, 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 and that might've come from your engineering background. I, I'm not sure. Uh, how, how, was there any growth in your personality of, of having to be a little bit more extroverted or not? Or Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, um, when I switched from engineering to doing full-time uh, real estate, right. In, in those sales, I did take a lot of sales training, 
right? And just implementing and just talking because you've really got to build that confidence, right? When when you're talking to people, you got to come across like you, you know what you're talking about. And sometimes when you're starting out, it's hard, but the key thing is repetition, right? You're not going to start out sounding smooth, but the more you do it, you just keep, it's like anything else. You just got to put in the time, you know, put in the work because, you know, before I got into sub two, I've been doing real estate for almost 20 years, right? Just, you know, just real estate sales. So it really was just kind of building up um, just getting my reps in. So you, so you already had the reps in. You already kind of polished in some of those regards versus maybe your brand new investor because you'd already been an agent. Right. Uh, Floyd, you are on with Keto. What's your question? I was asking, uh, what makes it so advantageous for you to invest in billings? Like what, what keeps you there other than it being local? I mean, I, we do everything 100% virtual. Yeah, for, for me, it's just like, um, you know, I, I, I know my market. Right. And then I built a team here locally and I can still make money here. So this is so that's why I continue to invest in billings because I'm, I'm fortunate that I can still do it in my backyard. And I built a lot of relationships, network with a lot of people. So sometimes still come to me like we just closed on a deal um, yesterday. Um, it was from, you know, somebody from Missoula, Montana, which is about six hours north from here. So because I built that religion, he called me up, say, hey, I've got a property in, in Billings and I want to be known like the guy in Billings to invest with. Right. If you want to invest in Montana, invest in Billings with Keto. So he reached out to me, um, you know, some of the opportunity made sense. So we went in and JV together on it. So, yeah, so that's why I love Billings, because I, I know my market. And like I said, I don't have to go elsewhere right now. So that I like that. I'm Me and sorry. Mark have honed down in in where we we like to work, but we're always open to do uh, deals elsewhere. We kind of keep our palate open. I had I had a couple other questions that I wanted to ask you. Sure. Um, like what as as all of us start this real estate journey, we all have different transferable skills. Like JJ can tell you, he has very unique skills from being in the industry he was in before, and our life experience in general. So, what was your biggest transferable skill? when you started your journey and where, where were you lacking the most? I think for me, with being an engineer, I was really numbers driven, right? So being able to look at properties and understanding the market and be able to analyze what made sense, what didn't make sense. So just having that, um, you know, having the engineer background, looking at the numbers really helped that transition, right? And then for, for me, you know, what, what I was lacking was actually, um, you know, it was basically like the, the finer details, right? That I didn't understand before, especially when you start getting to like fix and flips and doing stuff, which, which I've done, right? And, and what I realized was if you're going to get into an area that you're familiar, like partner up with someone that's done it, like my first fix and flip, it was a disaster because I didn't have any, like I was trying to do it on my own, Right. Um, then when I decided to get back to fix and flip, um, I went in and partnered with someone that did 150 of them, right? I figured, well, let me learn from it. So I did like three uh, fix and flips, partnered with someone that did over 150 while I was learning before I got, you know, before I kind of did it on my own. So one thing was, you know, find someone that's doing the things that you want to do, partner up with them versus just trying to do it on your own the first time. And that was my mistake on my very first one. And that, I think that's what I lost my shorts, you know, during that downturn because I was in the middle of a fix and flip and I didn't understand the market cycle. Floyd, did that answer your question? Yeah, that, that was great. I mean, I, I always like to hear that type of stuff as an advanced investor myself and stuff. I like to hear people's journey. I mean, I love what you've done so far, man. It's really great. Most people, like I see people just struggle, even when they get to like a, a million dollars in their portfolio, they like fall off on those basic principles and then things fall apart for them. You're doing great though. It's amazing. Thank Floyd, thank you so much for your question. Alex Chung, you are on with Keto Ketla. What's your question? Thank you, JJ and uh, Keto, nice to meet you, sir. I'd uh, inspire you with your story. I'd uh, probably have a uh, similar background as you are. Um, I'm from Cambodia and I escaped a refugee, but to make it short, um, I inspire you, but a quick question to make it short, a lot of people are waiting for you as well. So I'm thinking more geared toward the multi-family as well uh, to buy and hold. And would we 
what would be your suggestion for me to come in and jump on that without, you know, I my the main goal is probably I struggle the most probably the fund funding. I'm not uh, really have a lot network to uh, be able to get um, the private lending, anything like that. And that's the most uh, kind of deepest part of the water I didn't want to jump in just yet. So, but if you could guide me to, um, us, you know, give me some guideline, we'd be greatly appreciated. Sure. Yeah, it's a great question. I mean, what I recommend is like, you know, especially if you want to start into multifamily, like if you already, like if you you know, want to buy first, like if you don't already live in a house, you know, thinking back, if I would have started, I would have bought like a fourplex first, right? Because if you okay. can get in, in, in something yourself, right? You live in one, rent out the other three, that really gets your, 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 your foot wet, your feet wet, right? You know, but if you already have a house and you want to get into multifamily, you know, start partnering up with somebody that's already doing it, okay. right? Whether you're, you know, a partial partner, you know, where you can add, add some value so you can learn along the way, right? And sometimes we uh, we tend to think that, oh, because I'm new, I, I don't have any money. The truth is, is like, if you find a great deal, the mm. money will show up, right? Okay. If you find a deal yeah. that makes sense, especially, you know, if you're in the sub two community, there's so many, there's money out there left and right. Like I used to think that that was a barrier, like, oh, having the money. But what I find out is finding the deals is harder than finding the money. Right. That's what I'm like now. <laughs> yeah, so if, if you can find a deal, find something that's juicy, the money will follow. Ah, there, okay. Awesome. Is, Thank you. Got it. That is so true. And Alex, if, if you've got the deal, I'll find you the money. I, you know, part of the network is, is introducing you to people, helping you build your base, helping you build your connections. Connect with me. I'll help you build your business. I'll help you build your network. And, you know, I'll, we'll make sure that you're connected to Keto. Because okay. you guys have a similar story. I'm sure you'll want to get to know him a little bit more personally. And part of what we do is we make those connections. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, we'll 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 get you in his breakout room when we get to the breakout rooms. Do you guys have a few more minutes to talk on a little bit more intimate basis? Uh Alex, awesome. thank, you thank, so you. For, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your question. We have the charming Cora Lisek with us today. Cora, how are you? I'm good. Thank you for um, setting this all up and nice to meet you, Keto. <laughs> so what's, what's your question for Keto today, Cora? Um, my question is because how I've just, I'm a huge procrastinator and I realize that the only way I will follow something is if there's a system set up. And so my question is what kind of systems did Keto set up in the beginning to get just the ball rolling. Right. You know, the, the great thing is like, sometimes we procrastinate is like, you know, it's, I, I like to go back, back to, to mindset, right? Cause you got to really have a compelling future, right? Like really figure out your why and what's that important to you? Because that having that why is really going to push you because yeah, we, we have, uh, you know, yes, we can get the system and stuff, but if we don't have like a really compelling why we do what we do to get us to move. Cause for example, if, you know, if I was to tell you, hey, look, you know, uh, you're up, you know, 50 feet in the ground and there's a, a wire uh, across from you, you know, and there's a thousand dollars there. If you walk across a tight road, would you do it? You'll probably say no, right? If for a thousand, you know, I'm not going to risk my life. But if I told you, hey, look, your significant other is on the other side, that bill fire's burning, would you go across a tight road to get the significant other? You probably would, well, right? I have an ex-husband, so the answer to that would be no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, but that's the thing is having a, a compelling reason to why you want to do what you want to do. Yeah. yeah. Because once you have it, then getting the systems together, you know, whether, because once you find out what you want to do, whether, okay, yeah. look, I'm going to prospect, you know, if you're not good at prospecting, figure out someone that can prospect and you can do the follow-up, yeah. right? Because for me, yeah. like when I set up my system, I had someone basically do the cold calling. And I would just yeah. be the one who come in when somebody raises their hand, hey, I want to buy, then I would do the follow-up. Okay. Um, does that answer your question, Cora? Yeah. You know, I've, it did. <laughs> Thank you so much. My pleasure. My good friend, Mr. Mario Finkbonner. Mario, you're on with Keto Kedla. What's your question? 
Oh, hello, Keto. Thank you. It's an honor talking to you and learning from you. Thank you, JJ, for setting it up. Keto, I guess what I would say is I've been for 21 years doing uh, five to 20 doors. That was my niche. And now I'm graduated to 45 to 75. But for new people who want to go into it, my question would be, what would be your key players that you recommend or your dream team to help you achieve 80 units in two years? Um, that's a great question. You know, the key thing is having the right property manager, right? Because, I mean, they could make you or break you, right? Because if they're letting people go in there and, I mean, I because I, I know for me that, um, that I didn't want to do that property management side of it. I, I want to focus on finding the deals, right? So getting someone uh, that will kind of take over that responsibility and then also too having a handyman, someone that can fix things, right? Because I mean, with as many units as you get, I mean, you're gonna have toilets, you're gonna have things that break. And you know, I don't wanna get calls at you know, 2 a.m. in the morning, right? Um, something needs, something's broken, right? So you know, having a, a great property manager, whether you, you know, bring someone on, I actually had to build out my own property management company because instead of just going out and just hiring someone, I thought, well, you know what? Let me let me figure out how to do this. And so I, I got somebody on board that that I can train on on how to manage property. So having a good property manager, having someone that in maintenance, right? Um, then also to you know just being able to have someone in terms of like money wise, like you know where where to get the money when you find deals, right? So just know, because oftentimes when we don't think we have access to money prevents us from doing deals, right? But if you have a source that you can go to, hey, look, I, I need money for a down payment. I need money for rehab, stuff like that. I, I, you start to build out your portfolio and start to um, you know, build out your, your cash flow. Thank you very much. Great answer. Mario, always good to see you, my friend. Mark Presswood, you are on with Keto Ketla. What's your question, my friend? Appreciate everybody setting this up. Thank you, sir. Much appreciated. And, and what a what a what a journey for sure, huh? Zero to hero. <laughs> like I, I I'm an analytical kind of guy too, and the nuts and bolts about these big deals. And I think with the portfolios of the single family houses, like I see, like the insurance and and stuff is like ridiculous because you're buying multiple roofs versus like a apartment building. Could you go into some of the basic numbers of this of this thing? For yeah, for, for, yeah, for sure. Um, the insurance is always going to be a, a thing, right? Like, I mean, that, that that's a big cost. Um, I'll just take you back to, um, you know, my 18 units, which is the, the biggest one. And I actually got that through a, a handwritten letter, been mailing to this, you know, uh, to the owner for about a year. And he calls us up, hey, um, you know, are, are you still buying properties? Absolutely, we're still buying property. What do you have? So he, he goes, I mean, this this property, like, you know, for me, you know, I'm always, it, it's important, like you, you have to know your numbers, right? In the market that you're in, you got to know what the average rent go for, right? Because I knew that this guy, he was like 75 years old, looking to retire. And it's like, great. And he's in his property. He didn't keep them that great of a shape, right? But um, I always started talking to him, find out what he's motivated, why he wanted to sell. So you kind of get all that background. So then you can you got to look at yourself as, as a problem solver. Like what problem can I solve for this guy? Right. And he wanted to move to Arizona. He hates the cold Montana weather. It sucks in Montana. Minus 40 degrees is not fun. My wife still hates it. We've been here for two years and um, yeah. So she, she hates the Montana cold. Okay. <laughs> and today it even snowed a little bit. So anyway, so I knew he wanted to move down to Arizona. I knew he had a time frame, and I asked him, you know, what, what it would take. And sometimes it's not always about the price, it's about the terms. So I was able to get him, get this, you guys, unbelievable, 18 unit apartment complex. I got the deal on seller financing, okay? $2,000 down, yes, that's right, $2,000 a down, payment $1,000 a month, okay? Um, he, and I knew that on that, uh, that property, I generate close to $7,000 a month on that property. So it just cash flows 
the cash flows really well for me. And so, so just looking at the numbers and then, you know, for me, we have a, a, a short-term payout, right? But for me, I was, I was able to get in, stabilize the property. So where I'm, I'm getting, that's probably one of like, like my higher uh, returns, right? Just getting in, I mean, put 2000 down on a, on an 18 unit. That's pretty crazy. I think that's like the deal of the century for me, uh, just being able to get that. But he was retired. He wanted to move. And I basically said, hey, look, you know, I'll, I'll help you move to Arizona. You know, and matter of fact, I bought in, because this guy had a portfolio and I bought in all his portfolio uh, from him. So, and, and that's how I was able to, so, so quick, I got one guy that had multiple units. I said, I'll buy them all. And we just started doing it creatively. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the other questions that I was wondering, you know, how, how easy is it to actually get, a creative deal put together, just like you said, if, if you work with a seller, find out where their pains are. And, and most of these people, they just want some RV money or whatever and, mm-hmm. and, and just solve their problem. Just give them that continuous little bite off of that deal. And uh, man, you, you, you blew me away with, <laughs> with picking it up. <laughs> that, that, yes, that's the score. For, that's the sure. score, man. For sure. Yeah. Because there's a combination I've gotten, you know, other properties from, from the same seller and we just worked out a, a, a sweet deal. So in that regards, like working with the seller and being their best friend forever for life, yeah. friend for life program, truly yeah, paid sure. dividends they are going to just, the sellers know who they're going to sell the property to that, that actually pays the most attention, I guess, to, to, to their story and, and supporting them as, as much as possible versus just somebody that's transactional kind of thing. Right. And matter of fact that he was just here about a month ago and, and I let him stay in my Airbnb for a week for free. You know, because he still has family up here. It's like, you come up, let me know. I'll, I'll you know, because uh, I, I have like an Airbnb and I just, you know, I just booked out a room for him that he can stay there for free. Absolutely. Anytime. <laughs> yeah. Like anytime anytime you're up in town, just let me know. You know, you've, yep. you've got a place to stay. Absolutely. Well, congrats on your success, brother, man. I think that uh, it's an amazing story from zero to hero. Well, thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. I, I agree. Hey, Mark, thank you so much for your question, my friend. So, uh, Hito, hey, um, we're going to wrap up and move to the breakout rooms. Uh, but really quick, a couple things. If people want to connect with you, what's the best way to reach you? Is it LinkedIn, Instagram, YouTube, MySpace, TikTok, Twitter? What's your preferred method for people to reach you? You know, uh, they can uh, connect with me through Facebook. Send me a message. Connect with me there. I am growing my uh, YouTube channel. So if you want to go to Investing with Keto, I'm, I'm you know, working on just documenting my journey, you know, showing some insights and um, and what I'm doing. Like you'll see some updates on the projects that I'm working on and I break down the numbers for you and I'll show you the good and the bad. It's not always roses, right? Um, you know, I will show the bad. Like, you know, last month I did like two tenants. That was not fun. So, I mean, I'll share stuff like that as well. My group Keto is a networking group and a lot of people are out chasing the deal. And I always say, don't chase a deal, chase a relationship. But from your standpoint is someone who's been an agent, someone who's built their business, uh, grown it through sub two and pace more of his community. A lot of these education platforms have a Facebook group for their community, such as sub two. When people are coming into these platforms, whether they're a new investor or experienced investor coming into the social media arena for the, you know, relatively the first time, what's the importance of networking to build one's business? What's the importance of, of networking to build their network as well as the importance of joining a group like mine? You know, it's absolutely, you know, I'm a big believer in, in networking because I honestly, I wouldn't be, I would have been able to scale if I wasn't networking with other people, you know, especially people in a community of like-minded, you know, and they want to share, they want to grow, because real estate is is a long game. You got to look at it that way. And I, I, I love what you're doing, you know, teaching people how to network, right, and, and connecting with other people. And that's one of the reasons why, you know, I want to be on this call was, you know, so I can be able to to network uh, with, with people and, and, and sharing and growing. Because I remember when I started, I wish I had someone like me to show me, you know, what to do, right? So it, it's so important to to network, if, if anything, I really truly believe, you know, chase, you know, chase the network, right? And, and not the deal, because the deals will come through the network that you're building. 
Exactly, exactly. Well, I thank you so much. Hey, if you guys are watching this right now on YouTube, please like Kito's video, like the presentation, like our recording. Please put some comments down in the notation area for the YouTube channel. And if you're on the call right now, do not go away because we're going to go to breakout rooms and you will have a chance of being in a breakout room with Mr. Keto Ketla himself. So, Keto, we're going to jump to the breakout rooms, but I guess for now, um, you guys can follow Keto on Facebook. Look for me, jjzzin.com, my website. Click the little, little register now button. And other than that, look for more videos coming up on Flipside with JJ. And Keto, we'll, we'll see them in the future. And we're off to the breakout rooms, right? Yes. All right. We'll see you there. See you guys soon. Over and out.